virtual reality gaming headsets has often been viewed as being an interesting technology, but lacking of great games. And honestly, I cannot stress this enough, that cannot be further from the truth. While it is obvious that VR still has plenty of hurdles to jump, there are already plenty of great games on the market available right now. And PlayStation VR, while maybe not the most technically advanced VR headset, does have some of the best virtual reality games. The problem is, it's not always easy to find these games, so today we are going to take a look at the top 15 best PlayStation VR games available right now. Now do keep in mind that this is only my opinion, and if I don't mention one of your favorite games, let me know in the comments below. With that said, let's get right into the list. At number 15, I have Ghost Giant, and on the surface this game looks like a little cartoony game with cuddly little animals. And while all that is true, it also has one of the most emotional and heart-wrenching stories in games right now. Ghost Giant plays similar to point-and-click adventure games set in an interactive theater play. Each character in the game oozes personality and displays very realistic emotions and problems about depression. This is not an easy subject to tell a story about, but the developers do a fantastic job here. Unfortunately, it is a rather short game, but if you're looking for a good story, then Ghost Giant is a great game to pick up. If you're looking for something a little bit more humorous, then there is also Trover Saves the Universe. And seriously, there are not many games that I find as funny as Trover Saves the Universe. I don't usually find games to be funny at all, but I can honestly say that I laughed a lot while playing this game. With that said, the humor did start to wear on me the longer I played it, but luckily it's also a fun game to play. It's an action platformer with some collectathon elements to it, and I was kind of surprised by how fun this game actually was. Trover Saves the Universe may be goofy, but it's genuinely a good game. Tetris is one of those games that you either love it or you hate it, and I get that. The thing is, Tetris Effect is arguably the best Tetris game ever made, which is saying a lot for this 31-year-old franchise. The music and sound effects are just phenomenal in Tetris Effect and how they react to the player's actions, and each board is interesting with how the scenery flows in the background. Again, this may be just another Tetris game, but it truly is special and definitely worth a try. No Man's Sky was probably one of the most hyped up games this generation, and unfortunately when it originally released, it did not meet expectations. The good news is that Hello Games has drastically improved No Man's Sky since its original release, and it's actually a really good game now. This is also the case for the VR edition, and in many ways it makes exploring the universe even more compelling than it already was. One of the things that I've always loved about No Man's Sky is that it's creative with its vegetation, alien creatures, and its world, so when you see this in VR, it's pretty mesmerizing. It's also pretty cool to take off in a spaceship as if you're a real-life astronaut. Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin was a bit of a surprise for me. Not because I was surprised by how good it was, but rather because it seems like very few people actually know about this game. And that just should not be the case. This is actually one of the best VR games available right now, especially if you like the Psychonauts games. Rhombus of Ruin is set between the first and second game, but this is not a 3D platformer, but rather it's a first-person point-and-click adventure game with some clever puzzles thrown in. The story and its characters are once again great and has that odd and quirky Double Fine humor. This may not be the most well-known VR game available right now, but it's certainly one of the best. Superhot VR feels absolutely perfect with a virtual reality headset. Superhot essentially is a first-person shooter puzzle game where time moves only when you move. This gives you the sensation of feeling like you're in the matrix dodging bullets and dismantling your foes with minimal firepower. That's the thing though, a part of the fun is in how creative you can be solving these scenarios. You may slice bullets in half with a knife, throw your gun at an unexpected enemy, or even use everyday objects to your advantage. One thing is for sure though, Superhot VR is a blast to play. There are certain genres that just fit absolutely perfect with virtual reality games, racing being one of them. 
sitting in a cockpit view as you drive 100 plus miles per hour only to see your opponents in the rear view mirror just feels amazing. Now I actually do have two racing games here for you in specific though. Wipeout and Gran Turismo. I personally prefer Wipeout myself with that futuristic racing, but if you prefer the more realistic approach, then Gran Turismo is a great option as well. Either way, these two games are among the best racing games in and out of virtual reality, but with VR, it takes them to a whole new level. Another genre that has certainly hit its stride in VR has been horror games and the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners truly shines here. I mean, sure, it shines in a gritty, grotesque type of way with zombies lurking around every corner, but truly, it is an absolute rush to play. This game is a bit of a surprise, though, because I think there is kind of this negative view on movies or shows being turned into video games. But the thing is, The Walking Dead has consistently done pretty good in the video game format. The Telltale Walking Dead games were great point-and-click adventure games, and now Saints and Sinners has turned out to be a great first-person survival horror game. It has a compelling story, immersive combat, and a truly terrifying world to explore. If anything, Saints and Sinners is a must-play for fans of the horror genre, and a worthy title of the Walking Dead franchise. Moss was one of the first real must-have virtual reality games, and probably the first game that really showed that first-person games are not the only means to success with VR. See, Moss is a third-person action platformer where you play the role of two different characters, a giant overseeing a fairy tale like world and interacting with the environment, and then also a tiny little mouse in which you control. These two very different perspectives makes for interesting gameplay mechanics, and for that matter, a pretty solid story as well. Moss has fun combat, clever but not overly complex puzzles, and a beautiful world to explore. To this day, I will say that Moss remains a must-have VR title. One complaint for virtual reality games has been with the lack of big AAA games. While PlayStation themselves tried to change this perspective with Blood and Truth, this is that big AAA VR game that you've been looking for. Much like many of the PlayStation 4 exclusives, Blood and Truth is a very story-driven cinematic experience. In fact, I would say you're practically playing an action movie, and I say that in the best possible way. This is a very fun game with good shooting mechanics, the acting and facial expressions are phenomenal, and it's just a fun experience. It doesn't have the most memorable story in the world, but it's never lacking in fun. And to start off the top 5, I have Resident Evil 7. Now, I would actually consider Resident Evil 7 to be one of the best games of the entire generation alongside Resident Evil 2, but one thing that Resident Evil 7 included was virtual reality for PlayStation VR headsets. And I have to say, this does not feel like just a simple cash grab. Capcom did a really good job here, and if you thought Resident Evil 7 was spooky on the flat screen, you're really in for a surprise with virtual reality. This game can be absolutely haunting, and with that extra immersion, it will have you cowering in fear. Fans like to joke that Skyrim has been ported to pretty much every device, so it shouldn't be a major surprise that Skyrim has also come to virtual reality. The thing is though, Skyrim in VR is very good. Of course, Skyrim is one of the best RPGs of all time, and because it's a first-person RPG, it actually feels perfect in a virtual reality setting. You do have a big open world to get lost in, you have fun combat that feels great in VR, and you have countless side quests to distract you from the main quest. So even if you've played Skyrim before, I think this version is good enough for you to dive back in. And really, if you're an RPG fan, what they did here is just incredible. This is the full game that you can sink countless hours into, which is nice to see compared to other VR games, which are usually relatively short. Skyrim is easily among the best RPGs, and now it's also one of the best VR games as well. Most of the games that I have focused on so far are single player games, but Firewall Zero Hour is just a bit different. If you are looking for a competitive multiplayer shooter, Firewall Zero Hour is a no-brainer. It actually kind of reminds me of Rainbow Six Siege with its tactical gameplay, and if you pair Zero Hour with the PlayStation AIM controller, the immersion is just insane. 
That would mean nothing though if the mechanics didn't work well. But luckily Firewall is a great competitive shooter and many fans will even say it's better than flat screen games available today thanks to that extra immersion. I will say this, it does hold up pretty well and I would highly recommend it for multiplayer fans. Every once in a while there is a game that is so fun that not only will gamers enjoy it but pretty much everybody that tries it out. Well Beat Saber is one of those games. Anytime somebody comes over to my house, I always let them try Beat Saber, and every single time, that person is blown away. While Beat Saber does look simple on the surface, just slicing blocks with your Jedi-like lightsabers, the feel and the mesmerizing beat of each slice is both addicting and satisfying. Then there is the fact that there is a real skill when it comes to this game. When you play Beat Saber on harder settings, it gets pretty insane to the point you truly feel like a Jedi Master. Now my only complaint with this game is the standard edition doesn't really come with a lot of music, and it can get pretty tiresome playing the same songs over and over again. You can buy more soundtracks, but it can get rather pricey. Nonetheless though, Beat Saber is one of the select few games that I think almost everybody will enjoy whether they like gaming or not, and that is because it truly is that good. And for the number one spot, I have Astrobot, which truly blew me away. I was not expecting Astrobot to be nearly as good as what it is, and it's almost saddening that more people don't know about this game. Luckily, the PlayStation 5 will be getting Astro's Playroom, which I'm hoping will be just as good, but I do think virtual reality adds something very unique to this game. I would personally say that Astrobot is one of the best 3D platformers that I've ever played. It ranks right up there with Mario, Banjo, Spyro, and Crash Bandicoot, so it is in that elite group. Astrobot is not just cute though. The world is a joy to explore, the music is fantastic, it has fun collect-a-thon aspects, and the level design is superb. What I will say is that I think Astrobot is a masterpiece, and if you have PlayStation VR, this is an absolute, without a doubt, must-play game. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if I missed any of your favorite games, let me know in the comments below. With that said, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.